Diageo uh, picked seven, I believe it's seven. Hey guys, welcome back to Cast Strength. My name is Vito, and this is Vito's Whiskey Review Corner. I'll get the I'll get the title consistent one day. But we are here to talk about another Game of Diageo Game of Thrones release, and we're gonna tackle Lagavulin nine year old. Who has a sweet spot? There it is. So I did a sort of slight review with a bunch of Lagavulins, I'll link it up here if you guys haven't already taken a look at it, where I blind tested the Lagavulin 8, the 9, two of the 12 year old um, editions, the 16 and the Distillers edition. And I think that was back in December I did that. And since then, I've been really enjoying the 9 more than I thought I would have. Now, the in the video, there I did say that there was a, a good di uh, difference between the 9 and the 8-year-old. It does stand out extremely different when put side-by-side side with... Uh, other Lagavulin expressions. Um, and I guess with this one, we'll just quickly talk about the whole Diageo marketing campaign again. Um, the last video we, I did, we talked about the Johnny Walker White Walker, which I didn't particularly enjoy. Um, and right now, if you guys go watch that, um, if you leave a comment down below on that video, whether you'd like to see uh, me make a bunch of cocktails centered around uh, the Johnny Walker White Walker, for those of you that have it and don't like drinking it neat or on the rocks or cold um, and want some cocktail options, I, um, I have a couple of ideas of stuff that I want to do with that. So if you guys are into it, leave a comment over on that video. I'll link it right up here as well. Um, so yeah, so uh, the Game of Thrones uh, marketing campaign um, and Diageo partner, partnered up and Diageo uh, picked seven, I believe it was seven, um, of their distilleries to uh, tie in with a fan, with a house from Game of Thrones, and they gave L L uh, Lagavulin the title, the House of House Lannister. Yeah, um, this is the last one I have. I really want to get the Clinleach, and if I do get the Clinleach, I'll definitely put up a, a review of that. But in the meantime, this Lagavulin. It's, you know, it's got that, that subtle, classy level of peat smoke that's a little bit more intense, obviously, than the 16 because, you know, as peat ages, it does diminish a little bit in terms of its um, uh, uh, intensity. And immediately underneath it, a beautiful banana, banana cream and rich, rich fruits. And I don't believe this is um, finished in anything other than ex-bourbon, but I'll do some more research because um, I don't have my notes anyways, and there'll be a thing underneath here. Yeah, it's just a, a really nice inviting nose. Nothing's, nothing's too strong, nothing's too, um, to under the radar, everything's sort of mid-range. A nice little bit of saltiness. Just very, very nice and easy to approach on the nose. Fantastic. So, the slight uh, saltiness and peatiness that you get on the nose is elevated on the taste really oily and get it right in the back of the palate just kind of clings there gets ashy the banana note that I get it's a lot more subtle 
almost, hmm, almost like a banana muffin or banana bread. Probably see more on the bread side. Yeah, I'm gonna say banana bread. Cause I'm gonna stick with that. Yeah, and on the nose now it's getting into like that banana, beautiful banana custard. Very, very strong now. And the piece sort of takes a takes a step back to allow more of that fresh fruit come forward. The second smell and taste is always the best on a whiskey though. You always get so much more. A little bit of fudge, I think. Yeah, yeah. So Oh, not fudge, because not, not, not as rich of a, of a chocolate, milk chocolate, chocolate chips. Yeah, just a standard chocolate, milk chocolate chips. I wonder if this, if I take a third, if it'll turn into banana, banana bread muffins. Banana bread muffins? Chocolate chip banana muffins. I got it. <laughs> okay, no. Well, maybe. No, there's a pot, it's, it's that other thing with power of suggestion. If you think you're gonna taste something or smell it, there's a high probability that you're gonna get it. But it did turn into that. It turned into the banana, a chocolate chip banana muffin. A little softer now, not as bready, right? So a banana bread versus a banana muffin. There is a bit more moistness in um, in the muffins I find when they are made. At least when they're they're made, you know, homemade. It is so it is really good. It is really good. And I know a lot of people that that have had it have bought a bottle and went out and bought another bottle of this. Because it is very, very good. And depending on the price where you are, um, Comparatively to maybe the eight, uh, eight-year-old, if they're comparable where you guys are, I'd probably go with the nine over the eight. I'm gonna rate this guy uh, a level three because it is good. Uh, definitely, if you haven't had it and you like Lagavulin, buy a bottle. I recommend it. It is very, very tasty, and a, and it does stand in good contrast uh, to other Lagavulin expressions. If you like Legavulin and are kind of wary about a Game of Thrones marketing gimmick um, tied to Legavulin, they did it right. It's very, very good. So, that'll be it. Um, like, comment, subscribe, do all those fun stuff that lets us know that you guys are enjoying uh, what we're doing. Um, if you have um, comments and, crit uh, you know, and a positive or a negative criticism, let me know in the comments down below. I, I love hearing uh, both sides. So, yeah. You guys are awesome. Facebook, Twitter, at the Cast Strength. And we'll see you guys next time. Stay safe, stay classy. Sláinte.